Now to the one with enough power to, pr to prevent you from stumbling into sin and bring you faultless before his glorious presence, to stand before him with ecstatic delight. To the only God, our Savior, through our Lord Jesus Christ, be endless glory and majesty, great power and authority from before he created time, now and throughout all the ages of eternity. Isn't that awesome that we can uh, come faultless before the Lord this morning and um, ecstatic delight. I like that. That's a pa passion translation. All righty. Well, we're going to do a new song this morning. So I'll just pray uh, for us this morning. Lord Jesus, we just welcome you in this place. We say be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. Thank you that you came to save us, Lord. We worship you and glorify you this morning, God. I just ask that you would, you would speak to our hearts this morning. In your name, amen. Jesus, who pulled me out of that pit, he did. 
Amen. Can we lift up a shout of praise? Again, to you our hearts are open. 
death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse is blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could have known. For the earth. For the earth began to shake. And the veil was torn. What a sacrifice was made as the heavens rolled. And all church, we have the privilege to come together in communion to the Lord's table. So all of you that are called by his name, that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, please come participate in, at the communion table. So come out from your left, come back to your right, take the emblems, and then we'll share a brief word. sing again. There was a moment when the lights went out, when death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life, the darkest day in history. they made for sinners for every curse is blood atone one final breath and it was finished but not the end we could have known for the earth began to shake and the veil sacrifice was made as the heavens Savior 
this word came to me this week, actually earlier, the word redemption. It's a very powerful word. Biblical redemption throughout the Bible is the deliverance from the power of an alien dominion and enjoyment of the resulting freedom. That's who we are as children of the Most High God. We've been redeemed. We have been ransomed from the power of the, of the kingdom of this world. And we have the resulting is freedom and joy and peace because we've been purchased unto our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been ransomed. Restoration, we've been restored. Throughout the Old Testament, the, the term redemption is a restoration to one who possesses a more fundamental right of interest. It's like when the children of Israel were redeemed, Moses was called the Redeemer because they were God's people and God took them back. You and I are God's people and he has ransomed us and taken us back, redeemed us, called us children of the Most High God. And now we have fellowship for all eternity with our Lord and Savior because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we come to the table, we're remembering the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior as he became sin for us. He took upon himself all our sin and iniquity and he nailed it to the cross. And he spilled his blood and washed us clean that you and I can stand before him righteous because of the blood of Christ. We are righteous. We are redeemed. We have been ransomed. We are his. Praise God. What a beautiful message God has given to us through his son. So as we take the bread and the cup, remember who we are in God's sight. He sees us washed. He sees us clean. He sees us righteous because of what he accomplished for us. Father, we thank you for the bread. We thank you for the broken body of our Lord and Savior. Lord, as we partake and we remember great suffering that you endured for us. Lord, as you took upon our guilt and you called us righteous. Lord, as you healed us by your stripes, we take the bread now in the name of Jesus with great thanksgiving. of light breaking through when all was lost he crossed eternity the 
king of life was on the moon for in a dark old tomb where our lord was laid one miraculous breath thank you lord and we're forever changed Psalm 16, it says, you will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. And I just feel like God has shown me that sometimes we're so task oriented and we compartmentalize our lives that we sometimes put God in a, in a compartment. And he wants us to know that the finished work of Jesus has granted us access to God's presence and that the joy that we're looking for the satisfaction that we're looking for is found in him and that when we remain in his presence when we worship in our homes outside of a Sunday morning when we're in our cars and we're thinking about the Lord and we're offering him a sacrifice of praise all the inheritance of Jesus is there for us we are his children. We are his bride who he loved first while we were yet sinners. So the invitation for us is to stop compartmentalizing our walk with the Lord and allow him to consume us. Allow him, allow yourself to enjoy the presence of God. God, we just pray right now, God, that you would renew the joy of our salvation. God, we would not withhold ourselves from you. God, but we would remain in your presence. You would be in our mind, God. You would be in our hearts, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Jesus.
next song, the first two lines of it kind of go along with that, but it says, there's no lack in all you've given. I am richer than a king. You're so rich in the Lord, amen. Thank you, Lord. You don't lack in all you've given. Richer than a king. In the gift of Christ, my portion of my soul is well. There's no promise I am missing. All I need is been supplied. You're the strong and firm foundation of my soul is well, and my soul is well. Praise the Lord, oh my soul cry out. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. struggles have been many in the flesh inside me we Lord your grace and truth have taught me that my soul is well though I've wandered in confusion I've seen enough to know where I tread your goodness follows my soul is well and my soul is well let's praise him praise the Lord oh my soul cry out praise the Lord oh my soul Pray. 
again. My God and King, my strength and fortress, shepherd of my soul. My heart will sing and praise you always, shepherd of my soul. You
Praise your name, Lord. You are worthy of all praise and all worship and all glory and all honor. Your spirit is moving amongst us, testifying about Jesus and all that Jesus has done. And we glorify you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that we've been set free. We thank you that we've been redeemed. Praise you, God. We love you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Kids from kindergarten to fifth grade, I think I'm right about that. You can be dismissed along with the teachers. Why don't you turn and greet someone this morning? Say hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tom. I'm part of the leadership team here at PAC. We're so glad you could join us this morning if you're new. If you've been here a long time like myself, it's good to be together. Amen. Worship the Lord together. Rejoice in all that he's done for us. Um, just a quick announcement. Um, the, yeah, I know, I don't like announcements very much either. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a ministry happening uh, at the fairgrounds. We're joining with Heart of the City and Real Life and Anthem. And it's a ministry that's geared towards just blessing single moms. And I know I've mentioned it a couple times. Just want to bring it up again this morning quickly. Um, if you took one of the tote bags to put... Uh, all the goodies in there that's on a list. Um, we need those back by next week. If you didn't take a tote bag and would like to fill it with toiletries and different things to bless the single moms, I think we have six more bags back there. Uh, and so there's a table back there with this form that has a lot more information than I'm going to tell you right now. So I just encourage you to go back and grab one of these and talk to somebody who's back there about it. If you want to get involved, there's ways to volunteer. Uh, it's on May 6th at the fairground. So it's just going to be a great, great time to bless uh, these moms. So I want to encourage you to engage in that if you feel to. This morning, um, we have the, the great blessing to listen to a friend of mine, a guy that I've known a long time. Um, many years ago, he and I worked on a little island off the coast of Maui trying to find unexploded ordnance under the ground. Um, that's a story for another day. Uh, but as long as I've known Rick, I can say this about him without a doubt. This man loves Jesus, and you're going to see that today. And he's very serious about the kingdom of God. And uh, it's just been a blessing and a privilege for me to have him as a friend uh, throughout my life. And, and he has just been to India and Africa, which he's going to tell us all about. And um, just really excited to hear what he has to say. And I just really feel like the Lord has some special things for us today. So I just want to encourage you, open your heart, and uh, let's invite Rick up here to come and share the word with us. Amen. Hello. Ooh. Well, hello, family and church. How are you? You're going to find out. I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty charged up. Amen. Well, let's do this. Very. Let's let's stand and we're going to open in prayer. Hmm. 
So this, I'm, I'm going to kind of, uh, I'm a little bit different. I, I, I'm probably not the normal guy captain in the wheelhouse, so just bear with me. But I'd like you to, to keep your heads up and your eyes open. We're going to watch and pray, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you that by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony that we overcome. We overcome. And we thank you, Father, that today, that this day, that you brought it together, that we could to glorify the name of Jesus. So in that, we say amen. Be with us. Let your Holy Spirit be upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so I uh, had the great privilege of going over to India and then several spots in India, and then to Africa. I went with Tim Remington, if anybody knows Tim Remington from the Altar Church. Uh, he's a kick in the pants and a hoot. And <laughs> he's like my older brother Bob. He's just... A yeah, little, little, little screw loose there. I mean, <laughs> could, be, could be something to do with being shot six times. I don't know. Um, but uh, go ahead, Carrie. Go ahead. And we're going to, what I'm going to do, I want to kind of break this down. I'm going to kind of break down the semantics, so to speak, of my trip. Kind of the, the fun and the funny parts um, and just kind of the quirkiness of, the, you know, the countries that I went to. And then I'm going to come back to the beginning and I'm going to talk about what the spirit did. Okay. Does that work? Okay. So this first picture is in a boy Nagaland. A boy Nagaland is like on the very eastern, northeastern end of India, very close to Burma or Myanmar, if not very far from China. So there it goes my phone. I forgot to silence it. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead and go to the next slide there, brother. Um, you can see everything in a boy is grass huts. Um, for the most part, they build everything with bamboo. Uh, bamboo and grass and little fronds from trees. Uh, it's a very mountainous region. Um, and they don't look Indian. They tend to look more Asian. So uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. They grow coffee, albeit they don't know how to brew it. I'm just telling you that. I was so excited to finally go to somewhere where there was good coffee. Uh, this is the pastor and his one of his little girls. This is one of the huts that they have there. Um, they, uh, it's the funny thing about Nagaland, years and years ago, there was a ministry that came and many, 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 in fact, I would say, uh, they, they claim now 95% of the country claims to be Christian, albeit I don't think that's probably accurate. The pastor would say that that's not anywhere near accurate. Uh, Billy Graham actually went to Nagaland of all places. So interesting fact. Um, but there is a lot of problems in Nagaland. So this particular ministry deals with drug addicts, alcoholics, uh, people, the outcasts, because if you're an alcoholic, a drug addict, if you're uh, any kind of number of things, you are set outside the city. You're not... Um, you might be able to roam the main road or whatnot, but pretty much you're an outcast. And so this ministry, this man took it upon himself to start a ministry to those people. So anyway, that's kind of, okay, so go to the next slide. Uh, this is the hut where we ate. Um, guys, if you can think of elk camp, this is about 10 steps below elk camp. That's... <laughs> uh, the mattress is that thick with plywood underneath of it. Um, cooking arrangements, so when they cook, there's a fire in the back, and so the whole room fills up with smoke. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, you know, but you, you just go with it. Okay, go to the next slide. <clears throat> This is the city of a boy. So the, 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 the ministry is actually about four miles out of town. This is just some of the people walking in the city. Go ahead and go to the next slide. So this is uh, kind of the start of the ministry. This is their worship team. Go to the next slide. We'll come back to all this later on. Go, to, go ahead and you just see more of the people. Go to the next slide. This is the first day. Uh, yeah, that's that's me preaching. I, I've done more preaching than, wow, it's kind of crazy. But 
I just got to tell you, big, tall, white, bald guy that they all say, you look like Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's a draw. I'm telling you, they don't, maybe they don't know they're coming to hear the word, but they're coming to see the big, tall, white, bald guy. So go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, you can see the, the people, um, that's Tim Remington there. Um, this is actually the very first day. So go ahead and go to the next slide. Praying and ministering to people. Go ahead and go to the next slide. And we'll come back on that story because we're going to come back around to all these. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh, isn't that cute? I like it. Go ahead and go to the next slide. This is actually the last day, so you can't really tell, but expected 50 to 75 people to come. The bottom area actually had 250 chairs, plus there were people standing up, plus there were people up on the balcony, and what you can't see is that there's people kind of like squatting down back there. They're very small people. Uh, average person's probably about that tall. There are some that are this tall, that's tall. So, okay, go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, we took communion. Um, this was actually uh, uh, a real sad place in their history. And so we actually kind of went over there just to pray for that healing of, of the people in er that area. Go ahead and go to the next slide. And that, that's the quick synopsis of Nagaland. We're going to come back to that and talk more about it. So let's go to Sil Siligiri. Now, Siligiri is kind of the hub of northeast India. Um, it's really like a neck. So just above it's Bhutan. Over here is Nepal. China is actually not very far away. It kind of gives you an idea of Siligiri. It's, and then right down here is Bangladesh. So uh, go ahead and go to the next one. This is a pastor's conference. And this, this is actually a conference for pastors, and then there were students, and I don't know why the students weren't in this picture, but there were 12 students that ended up graduating from a two-year course that uh, Legacy International conducts, a two-year course, for to actually go out and begin to minister as pastors. Uh, go ahead and go to the next one. Met some amazing people. Go ahead and go to the next one. It's kind of... There's Tim and Eric. Eric kind of heads up Legacy International. That's one, That's a new building that they have. Uh, go ahead and go to the next one. This young man. Wow, I met so many people there. Were just amazing. Uh, I've got a whole story to tell about this man uh, and his family, and that's going to be amazing. So this is VJ. And VJ has been praying for us, for you guys. So, and, and this young man is really speaks prophetically. I'm just going to lay that out there, okay? And he has amazing, amazing downloads, I'm going to call it, from the Holy Spirit for us. As collectively, as a church there, collectively, us included. So, cool? All right, let's go to the next one. And VJ actually, he ministers in the jungle tribes of India. Okay, go ahead. So you can see that there's VJ and all these people. They're, the quick synopsis of that VJ uh, was a Hindu, dad was a Hindu priest. Uh, and then there was quite a miracle that took place where his grandma, I, I finally got the. I'll come back to the whole story. But his grandma was completely healed after her crying out to all her gods. And she said, if there's a real God, then I want to be healed. Well, the neighbor next door, I don't know how much next door means, but anyway, was a new believer and came over by the power of the Holy Spirit and spoke to her and said, it's Jesus. She was miraculously healed. The whole family gave up Hinduism. Okay, there's the quick story. Okay, let's go to the next one. That the temple where they were the high priests, this is actually the largest Hindu temple in India. And just a quick note about India in Hinduism, um, it's actually <clears throat> a privilege to sacrifice yourself to the Hindu gods. To actually, So there, about a week ago, a young married couple actually rigged up a guillotine to actually cut their heads off, and they did 
So, yeah, that's, that's the darkness that's over that country. Okay, go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, that is grandma, mom, and that's VJ. And this is just to kind of get an idea where the dot is on India there. That's where he is ministering right now. Okay, uh, go to the next one. Where are we going to? Okay, this is more of his ministry time there. Um, I, I just want to say this real quick. Two years' time, there's 40 churches that have been planted because of this young man and the vision that God's given him. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next one. And now we go to Darjeeling, which is from Siligree. You go literally 25 miles and you go to 8,200 feet of elevation. And from Darjeeling, you get to look across at Nepal and you can actually look up and see China, if it's clear. Um, and you can actually see Bhutan. So you kind of give you an idea where you're at. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, this is the worship team. Now this building, what you don't see is that every time I go in this building, it's like, oh God, please help this building to stand up. <laughs> Because if you go off the balcony and you look down, it's like, crap, that's a long ways down there. It's probably 60, 80 feet. I don't know. And there's these little concrete pillars coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, next. <laughs> uh, the people worshiping. These are a very Nepali-type people. The, most of the ethnicity comes from Nepal, a little bit of Bhutan, a little bit of China. <laughs> Um, so, and they're very shy people. I would say that about the Naga people too. They're fair, fairly shy people. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Yeah, so <laughs> you can see me sitting there with all of these um, ribbons on me. So they, uh, they're they a very honoring people. And so they were very excited uh, to have me there. So I was, I asked Prashant, who's the, the, the head pastor, uh, pastor there, um, there's actually five satellite churches. And I said, hey, should I come prepare? He says, no, we're just going to come and we're going to bless you. Oh, okay. Came up, had breakfast, it was amazing. Climbed up the, the quite steep sidewalk up to the church, uh, got in, did our worship, and then stood up for a person to put a thing over my head, the next person to put a thing over my head. I must have had 40 or 50 of these things on my head. <laughs> But they're very honoring people, and especially the fact of their elders, their elderly, they very much honor them. Um, more of ministry time there. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, there you can see the group of people. Actually, it's interesting because there was a count uh, that was done, and you can see that's not a real big place, right? There was 300 people in there, so I think a lot, because they're shy people, there's a lot of people that went outside. They didn't want to be a part of the picture. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead and go to the next slide. And now we go to Zimbabwe. And I mean that. They know how to dance and praise. Woo! I'll tell you what, that was, that was some of the best time. Uh, I actually was going crazy on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, and I twisted my ankle really bad and my ankle got swell, swelled up and my foot was all tore up. And uh, Go ahead and play the slide if you would. If do we, Okay, there, do you kind of get an idea where we're at? Tim will appreciate the fact that Malawi's not that far away, Tim Dixon. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, ha, we got sound?
So I gotta tell you a quick story. So in India, you eat rice in the morning, rice at noon, rice in the uh, nighttime. I mean, it's, it should be a song, right? <laughs> And fried rice and fruit in the morning, and rice and maybe maybe a little bit of meat for the e afternoon and the evening. It is a mound of rice. It's like, woo, I'm so glad to come home. In Africa, they eat white corn. And so in India, I was allowed to go serve myself, and so I didn't have to take a whole lot of rice. But in Africa, they brought me my plate, and it's white mashed corn. And so it's a type of corn where you can sit and grab it and play with it like Play-Doh, if that kind of gives you an idea. And it would be a mound of this white corn and some little bit of beef and a little bit of vegetables. It was like, oh, again? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, okay, let's go. Oh, let's go to Zimbabwe or uh, Zambia. Oh, there, hey, there's Kuda. I just, I want, I told him, I said, I'll make sure everybody knows who Kuda is. He, he took us everywhere in a little car and did special things. So I just want to recognize he's such a good brother in the Lord. And hey, let's go to Zambia. Yeah, let that stay there for a minute. <laughs> That's pretty much how it was. All right, let it play. So that's the quick version of my trip. So I am so excited that eventually some of you are going to go too. So y'all believe that? Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go back. All Carrie, we're going to go all the way back to Nagaland. And I want to give you guys kind of a theme of how the spirit moved. Now, here, here's the funny part. <clears throat> I had been prepping to go on this trip and like, okay, I got to make sure I have some, a word of the Lord. And, you know, so I'm trying to come up with notes. Tom did a three part series on who we are in Christ. And I took a lot of notes and I went back and like, oh, da, 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 and, I, and I had that. And I had a, another book that uh, David Youngie Cho wrote. And I had, oh, a book on revival, and I had my Bible. My brother Tom took my luggage out to the car, and then we got to talking, and off to the airport we went, and didn't even think twice about it, and I got to a city in India, and I'm like, where's my notes? Where's my Bible? Uh-oh, and then I got to Nagaland, I'm like panicking, Tom! I actually couldn't believe it. In Nagaland, I mean, we're talking it is in the sticks, guys. I had cell service, so they don't have much, but they got cell phones. <laughs> Can you believe it? And Tom, I reached out to Tom, and Tom was so gracious, and he sent me all of his notes. And so I'm working with that, and I'm working with somebody else's Bible, and it's like, oh, God, what am I going to do? And um, anyway, God started to... I actually went through some of the started on the series on that first night. Uh, it was like I wasn't getting through. I just it's just like it's not where the spirit was directing, and I, uh, the spirit just kind of said, "Let's just have the people pray and just pray for repentance." I'm like, "Okay, uh, are you sure, Holy Spirit?" Because that's just kind of awkward right now. And so there was a little bit of arguing. <laughs> well, okay, so that, that happened. And there was some response. And uh, it's like, okay. So got a little bit more bold, got a little bit more excited. So the next day comes around, and I, <laughs> I use this funny analogy of having a knife. Because you got to understand, you're doing everything through an interpreter. It's a little bit more difficult. It's, and you're, you're, you can't just come in with dot, 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 and teachings like we do it's it's like you got to bring it more like 
show and tell. So I played show and tell, and I had this big old uh, cognac, the, the, the cognac, tried this big old cognac knife. And it was as dull as can be, because I they asked me to cut the beef that morning, and I'm just like, my gosh. And I'm just like, okay, Holy Spirit inspired me. This is part of the message. So I took this message, and I said, God wants to use you. And that's pretty simple. God wants to use us. But he's longing to have that tool be sharpened. And so, sharpening of the word, sharpening of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Sharp, iron sharpens iron, brother and sister, sharpening one another. So I use this analogy, and they are like, yeah, we get that. You could just sense it in their heart. They're getting it. I said, okay, let's pray again. Let's pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit to come upon us. And let's pray that we just can open our hearts. And so, again, we prayed. Now, not only did the women come up, because let me tell you what, in those cultures, the women respond and the men don't. The men, yeah, it's kind of true that way. The men, it's, 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 it's kind of like um, a pride thing, obviously, but um, may, maybe it's something that, you know, the women should do that kind of thing and then go home and tell me about it and nag on me type thing. <laughs> I don't know. But it was awesome. So the men responded. And pretty soon there was about 150 people down on their hands and knees. So go, go to a slide. Go to the next slide. Go to the next one. Go to the, we're going to go about six more. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Let's keep going. There, there I am with the knife. Okay, so this is first day. You can see the people. Now keep going. Here, here is actually that, that next evening. Um, so you can see there's gals there, but you can see off over here. And by the way, men are on one side, women are on the other. It's, it's, that's culturally how they do it. Husband and wives don't sit next to each other. So we're, anyway, we're ministering, and the Holy Spirit literally just came in like a flood. I don't know how to explain it, guys, but a real heart of repentance just came upon that place, and it's just, so we had a, a time of afterwards, and um, we ended up praying for people. One gal that we were praying for her to receive her he healing. So I'm praying for her ear, and Tim is praying, and through the interpreter, oh, I can hear a little bit better. So we keep praying, we keep praying. Uh, I can hear. I mean, she's getting all excited. We never saw her again. <laughs> what happened? Uh, uh, on another guy, there was an older guy, and he had this big old growth on his neck. And as we're praying, and I'm, I'm kind of nudging the guy next to me, I'm like, look at that thing move. And as, you know, we're praying on him, and that thing would move. It would kind of like get out of the way. And then we'd stop praying, and like, let's pray again, and that thing would move. And had I think I'd been a little bit more attuned to what was going on, it, maybe there was some real spiritual influence in that. I wish, I wish I'd have prayed into that, but I wasn't, I wasn't there. Was the, the people press in on you because they want to be prayed for. So go ahead and go to the next slide. This gal here, her, the Indian army mistaken her husband for, I don't know what, they killed her. She heard that there was going to be a ministry time and she did everything she could to go from the very far reaches of Nagaland on foot by anybody who'd give her a ride or whatever. She left when she first heard it on Friday. She got there Saturday evening. So those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Tell you what. There was a downpour on that poor lady. The Holy Spirit just came in and just enveloped her and just filled her up. Wow. I wish I could take us and just go, whoo, guys. The Holy Spirit was so active and powerful and moving. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> I got to tell you, I didn't want to leave Nagaland. 
There was a part of me that's like, I don't want to leave. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here we are. Now, men are engaged. Uh, and I think because of the night before, how the Holy Spirit was moving upon people and their hearts were open and they were ready to receive. But again, that message was repentance. So that was the theme throughout. You're going to, you're going to see as I go through this, the theme throughout was repentance and receiving. It's amazing. So God is ready to pour into his people. Just going to put that out there. All right, here we go. Ready? Where are we at? Okay, communion. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to Siligri. And then let's go to the conference. So in this conference here, uh, I met guys, people from Nepal. I met people from Bhutan. And what's the strange part, Bhutan is a very closed country. And so it's not real easy to come out of Bhutan and, and come to a conference like this. They came from, uh, there was one gal that came to this conference from Myanmar, took her 21 days to get to that conference. But she was, she didn't have any money. She heard that this conference was going on. It's like, oh my gosh, hallelujah. So you can sense that there's already uh, a desire there. Oh, come Holy Spirit. Um, there's a real hunger. It's just, just like, ooh, you know, there's that awakening that happens. I got, here's a gold coin. So I was out with my son out at his property, and he was trying to get these stumps to burn, and he had thrown stuff on there, and he's doing stuff, and he says, Dad, can you bring out your blower? And so he would get it going, but then as soon as he'd add, add air, those little bit of coals would just take off. They're like, man, that's the Holy Spirit right there. That's the Holy Spirit desiring to blow upon his people. That a little bit of kindling would just take off. So there, have that. That's a little nugget for you guys. Okay, a little. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, next one. And next one. Okay, so next one. Okay, so I want to take a deep dive. So VJ, um, he's the one who, um, by the way, when I got up last Sunday, uh, I, I want to tell you that VJ and Bernard and um, Parham, I'm just going to say out names, and Malie and Smart, yes, his name is Smart, and Bernard and Martin, and I'm just trying to think of all these people that have reached out to me. And very much prophetically, they have all said, we're praying for you because God's going to do great things in this church. In North Idaho, but in this church. So, is that all right to share? So, VJ out of the Hindu religion. And uh, so what happened, I finally got the story straight. In fact, I should probably open that up because VJ's sent me quite a lengthy thing. So I won't, I won't go into all of it because it, man, they can talk. <laughs> uh, so, but I'll, I'll try to get the majority of what he says. So it's his mom and his grandparents. They are worshipers. Her, her mom has this debilitating disease and her eyes are swollen. She's got this growth on the neck. And so VJ's grandpa says to her, why don't you just go sacrifice yourself? Why don't you just go commit suicide to their God? Okay. And, uh, and she's like, I don't want that. I, I want. So she went to the temple and she prayed for hours and hours and hours for her gods to, they didn't, this went on for two months of her going to the temple to pray to be, and nothing ever happened. She lost control of her body. Um, her father came back, scolded her again, and said, please go get suicide. That's how he described it. Um, so anyway, she cried out to God, and she had a visitation of, I believe, Jesus. And she said, no, get away from me. I don't want the English God. In front to them, 
this English God. They think they don't like the English. I'm just going to tell you for obvious reasons. So she kept screaming, this real God. He had the neighbor, who was a new believer in Christ, gets awakened in the night, goes over to her house, and there she is. And she says, um, I come to present to you the living God. But I, who is this living God? How, how do I possibly? She said, let me pray for you. So she prays for her and lays hands on her, and she's instantaneously healed. Now, apparently, Grandpa came and saw the whole thing as well. Okay, so this is a pretty radical miracle. All of a sudden, the whole family goes in and, and basically tells the whole church, and apparently they have followers. They Each temple has a set of priests who so many people are under that priest. and Well, that whole group left because of the miracle. Fast forward to VJ being now raised as a Christian believer. He gets radically saved. God, what do I do? So God says, go to the village people because nobody wants to go there. And so VJ goes to the village people. And the, in the village people, they, they held him by knife and said, we're going to kill you. And he said, please, can you just wait till morning and see if my God will speak to you? And during the night, the village elders heard throughout the trees, my name is Jesus. My name is Jesus. And they came before. No, they don't move around in because there's no street lights. There's, it's very dark. They don't have flashlights. It's still the jungle people. But during the night, they came back to BJ, and at, at dawn, they said, who is this God? And anyway, the Holy Spirit came in power. They got saved. They got filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's the birth of those 40 churches. So Easter Sunday, fast forward to this, just this past Easter Sunday, they gathered other tribes as well, and 86 came to know the Lord. 86 people. So... This young man has, he and two others have prophetically said, we're coming to your church. That's the part that grabs me. I, <laughs> Inga says it's because I'm old, but <laughs> old men dream dreams, right? So... I would get awakened in the night and I would have dreams about people here and I would have dreams about you. And this dream, so to speak, of a consuming fire that actually was spoken of before I left, when I go over there, everywhere I went, they talked about a consuming fire. I'm like, oh my goodness. So it's like, okay, I'm, you got my attention, God. And then... He says, I just want you to know, brother, God's spoken to me that I'm coming to speak to you guys. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in. I'm, I'm ready. Um, Aget and She Wong, they've been awakened with dreams that they've come and they've been ministering here in America. I, I'm just, I'm blown away, guys. So, whew. Yeah, I don't want to get too off track yet. <laughs> I got a message still. Are you guys good? Okay. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So go ahead and go through, just start filtering through the, the different slides there. Yep. And now let's go to Darjeeling. So in Darjeeling, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go there and I'm just going to be blessed. So they put all those things around my neck and they presented Inga and I with a plaque and, you know, many just thank yous and whatnot. And, uh, and then they said, and Pastor Rick, by the way, they call me Pastor Rick. Pastor Rick's going to bring the word. I'm like, okay, I should have known this was going to happen. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I thought I was coming just to receive, but no, no, it doesn't work that way. So I'm like, okay, but I've already kind of been sensing by the Holy Spirit that get ready. So anyway, one of the young men, the young pastors, was up front praying. Um, and I could sense that there was a real outpouring of the Spirit coming out of him. I and mean, he was just praying. This prior to church service, and they're praying. They're really actively engaging, calling upon the Holy Spirit to come. And uh, I just sensed, ah, we're supposed to pray. So the message that I was going to bring was the prayer of repentance and the prayer of intercession. I said, I need you, because he doesn't speak English. The only one that speaks English is Prashant and his sister-in-law and his wife. So I said, come up here and let's intercede over the people. Let's, let's begin. Let's do a warrior's cry, and let's do the mother's cry, and let's do the cry of the Holy Spirit that groans from deep within. Wow, you guys. The Holy Spirit came on that room in a flood. Ah. Uh, it, okay, I'm just, I, I'm kind of prepping you guys. Do you guys feel that prepping? Because what's been communicated over there is that it's coming. <laughs> so, anyway, we do that. And it's, this prayer goes on for 15 minutes. Um, and then it's time for Pastor Rick to, to preach. So uh, I start preaching about the prayer of repentance. Who is our first love? You know, I kind of come into who is your first love? Have you kept Jesus as your first love? Because I'm speaking to believers. And so when we went from there and I, we went into, I, I started speaking about intercession. And how our great intercessor, Jesus, intercedes for the saints and and we also get to intercede for one another we get to come with boldness before the throne of god in intercession we get to ask of him um so anyway i i asked anybody want to come and receive boldness and maybe receive a, a greater depth of intercession so oh, there were several people that came up forward and <clears throat> let me back up. Part of my testimony is when I got saved in the Catholic Church. Now, you got to understand, this is Nepal people. There are some Catholics in Darjeeling. And they all shake their heads like, who are the Catholics? I mean, they, they all kind of like, they run around in these robes and they, these little tight collars. And they're kind of like the weird Christian version of a Buddhist. I don't know how to describe it. It's really different. And I said, I got radically saved in the Catholic Church. And boy, their eyes just got huge. They're like, is that even possible? <laughs> so anyway, I was just saying how when I got saved, I would have these moments of just crying, crying. And this went on throughout my high school years till about my junior year. And I finally remember, I specifically remember saying, God, can I please stop crying? Yeah. And so, guess what? I stopped crying. And fast forward two years later, and the amazing part is right before my dad died. But I'm praying out, God, could I please sense your Holy Spirit again? I'm dry. And I just, I need to experience the washing of, of your Holy Spirit over me. <laughs> anyway, I went to a, a, a home church, and somebody said, who wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? I'm like, I've never heard of such a thing. Okay. And they took me into a back room. And I tell you what, guys, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And guess what? I started crying again. <laughs> I mean, I mean, wow. It's just, it, but you know what? That, I did not discount that anymore. That was just, I, I, as I've grown and matured in the Lord, I've realized that is a real intercession. And so... Now fast forward to Darjeeling, and I'm, <laughs> I pray, does anybody here want to have an intercession from a warrior's heart, or maybe from a mother's heart or a father's heart, um, and they want to really intercede for somebody? So several people came up. One older gentleman, which is unusual for the 
but first it would always be the women. But one older gentleman came up, and we started laying hands on people, and the Holy you could just sense the Holy Spirit was very present. But because the one older gentleman came forward, now more men started to come up. And they could sense, because here's the older gentleman, I'm just, just hear me out. The older gentleman's like, he's crying, and you, he's just weeping. They don't do that in that. So the other men are going, okay, there's something real going on here. There, and they, you know, there's a burning that happens in your heart. There's a real desire that starts awakening. And they came forward, and pretty soon the whole church is like crying. <laughs> And I, I felt that the Holy Spirit say, because then, then all of a sudden people come that need physical healing. And so I, I, I'm, I'm being told, you need to pray for people, for their healing. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, uh, those, those two people, these two women back here have the gift of healing. So I finally got their attention. I asked them to come forward. I said, God's imparted into you the gift of healing. So I need you to begin to pray. And so let me just interject for those who might think otherwise. I am not one to go around and say everybody should be slain. That's not me. I don't, I, I kind of shy away from that. But when it happens, because I, I'm just telling you, the two gals turned, prayed, and I found out from Eric it wasn't just the one older gal. I mean, they just went down. They're just like this whole front row, the whole thing, they went down. They were there for healing. I asked Eric and I asked Prashant, who was that? And Prashant says, they were healed. I'm like, I know, but what, ha what happened? They were healed and that's good enough. Isn't that good enough? <laughs> like, okay, I get it. Hallelujah. So um, anyway, um, I'm going to bring that into kind of a message later on about dryness. And how those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Wow, you guys. I'm so excited that some of you said, yeah, you're ready to go. And some of you are ready to send them to go. And some of you are ready to receive those who come. Uh, that, it's guy, the Holy Spirit's really stirring some stuff up. So, okay. Let's keep going into Darjeeling there. Keep going, keep going. That people there, I asked Prashant, I said, so what's happening? And Prashant says, Pastor Rick, I just want you to know, all the churches are praying for you. I think God's got some big plans for us, little tiny packed church. But I think there's got to be something stirred up in us. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Ah, yeah, Zimbabwe. Wow. Um, I don't want to play the video because it'll just go, but I'll play it toward the end. Um, again, here comes the message of repentance and seeking God, making him first again. And then the power of the Holy Spirit coming in like a flood. And so I was tasked with, so it was a... <laughs> There was, Nagaland was a conference, a three-day conference. Siligree was a three-day conference. Darjeeling was a one-day conference. Africa was a three-day conference. And then it was another three-day conference. So you can see, it's kind of like you, you begin to get a pattern of, okay, Holy Spirit, is this the theme throughout the churches? Is this what's, where you're headed? And very much so, it was a theme that he is ready to bring forth a consuming fire. So there, there's a, a, a baptism of repentance. There's a baptism of becoming born again. There's baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there's a baptism of fire. So remember I talked about there was a message of consuming fire, prophetically speaking. And I get over there, and I can't tell you how many times 
people that I don't know would said, God is going to bring a consuming fire. I'm like, okay. All right. So here comes this message of consuming fire. Okay. So fast forward to Zimbabwe. I'm tasked with the first time speaking on, I spoke on prayer. I spoke came to destroy the works of the evil one, but he came to, dis, to really reveal the Father's heart. That's really, I mean, that is ultimately he wants the Father's heart. He wants us to know the Father. Paul, here's Apostle Paul, who we know worked in power and in might. What does Paul say in Ephesians 3? I want to know Christ. <laughs> Wow, I want to know Christ. In 45 years of knowing Christ, I can faithfully say I want to know Christ because there's a burning in my heart that... Hmm. Hey, Tom, I'm going to tell on you. I got to sing over people. <laughs> I sang two songs. Actually, I sang three, but... I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And I also then, after there was a, t a time of, of kind of falling on our knees, then there was a time of just great power, and I actually sang a song that Tom wrote many years ago, but it, it just was right in front of me, and the Holy Spirit says, sing the song. And so I got to sing, The Spirit and the Bride, cry out to you, come, Lord Jesus. Mm. It was amazing, guys. Simple little stuff like that was just astoundingly powerful. So I was tasked with the separation of the church again. You got the men over here and the women over here. And so here's the men. We're in a tent. And you, you can go ahead. Do I have just pictures or does it? Can you stop that video at all or not, Carrie? No. Nope. Okay. Well, there's a spot that we'll see where we're kind of in a tent. And uh, I, so I'm, I'm tasked with leading the men for an hour and a half. And so I was like, Holy Spirit, where do you want to go? And he said, go to repentance. And so I, for they kind of, because they all think again, some, don't ask me. I never heard of Stone Cold Steve Austin until I went overseas. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Um, so I, I, I'm over there and... I'm thinking, okay, let me, let me tell these guys who I am. I'm a, I'm a dad of four. I have 13 grandchildren. I'm 60 years old. And they're like, what? Because a lot of times, I mean, they're happy to live to 60 over there. That's pretty amazing to live to 60. And so I, now I've got their attention. I was a high school jock. I was, and I gave them the story of how I got saved in a Catholic school with 30 of, the, of my athlete friends behind me. Yeah, you kind of see where I'm going with these guys. And most of them are young men. And then I said, guys, the Holy Spirit wants to do mighty things in and through you. But I'm going to ask you, and I asked them point blank, a very hard question. And I hope I'm okay to share this right now. And I said, guys, are you dealing with pornography? And I'm telling you what. I got, their eyes became this big. I said, let me tell you what. There's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here and present. And so I am going to ask us, let's repent. I'm, that whole tent went down on its knees so fast, and it, was just, it wasn't just, oh, I repent. It was crying, sackcloth and ashes, if I can call it that. It was crying and weeping, and there was a real strong anointing upon that group of men to come together and just say, I want to come back to you, Jesus, my Lord. I want to forsake all these things. I want to come back to a heart of worship. Okay, so half hour goes by, we all stand up, and I said, now the Holy Spirit wants to empower you. Who wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Three guys. I mean, they jump out of their chairs. They come up. I'm just going to tell you, for those who might have difficulty this, we laid hands on them and they spoke in tongues. 
Is that okay? That's the power of God. So I just, I actually, Carrie, if you're ready, we're going to play a song. Are you ready for first things first? I'll let him get that queued up. Sunday morning service, Easter Sunday. Was a, uh, Carrie, you tell me, you kind of give me an idea of when you're ready. Um, I was astounded. After the heart came to a place of search me and know me, the very deep thing God rooted out. Okay. Um, he's, Carrie says, who's it by? Consuming fire. He's got it. Okay. Sunday morning. Um, okay. We're going to listen to this. Go ahead, Carrie. Go ahead and let's listen to the song. All the things that I've held dear, the vanities, the whispered in my ear. Well, what I do if they all disappear? Chase what the world 
says um, the same message is right here for us. It's that same, same thing. Holy Spirit speaking throughout all the churches. All right. I want to bring forth some words for everybody. Is that okay? I'm gonna, we're going to preach the Word of God. Okay. So, talk about repentance and the need for repentance. John came preaching the kingdom of God is near. Repent. Jesus came preach, preaching repentance. The kingdom of God is at hand. So, we know that repentance is... Okay, for, for those that don't know, repentance is like turning. It's the prodigal son who turns to face the father. Okay? So repentance. We must be born again. Then there is a prayer of intercession. There's a prayer. Jesus intercedes on our behalf. We also get to intercede. We, we groan. The, the, the scripture says that there's a, the spirit groans deep within us. In groanings and words that we cannot understand. So, sometimes intercession, like I said, is a weeping that takes place. And I tell you, oftentimes when I'll, and I, I don't discount this anymore. I used to go, oh, I don't want to do that anymore because I just cry. But I sense that the Holy Spirit is actively at work. There's something that's going on. Um, well, anyway, I hope that's okay to share with you. In Jeremiah 29, 13. You want to bring that scripture up, brother? If you seek me, uh, we like to use Jeremiah 29, 11. And we like to, God knows me. He, he made me in the, Becca, you've got it on your arm. <laughs> we like to, we, but if we go a couple scriptures further, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So here's the theme throughout my speaking in all these conferences. Is that uh, an awakening need to happen. Happen. There needed to be a kindling. There was, there was a dryness. That uh, God, are you really there? I've been in this dry valley for so long. I... I don't know if I really trust you anymore. I've seen strongholds build up in my heart. Can that wall come down? Can those chains really be broken? <laughs> Get ready. They can. Hallelujah. Woo. <clears throat> All right. Let's go to Luke 10, 19. I want to jump right there. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you're in an environment where the demonic forces are very strong and real, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to be with you. Have you guys noticed in this country the increase of the demonic have you guys noticed that? Then and lawlessness and whatnot. More and more, we need to be established in the Word of God, so that we operate in authority. Jesus said, "All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go and make disciples." That authority has been given unto us to go and make disciples. Now, is it just to go and say, "Be born again"? No. It's to go and say, be born again, be filled with the Spirit, be healed, you know, be raised from the dead. Come on, church. This is where the early church was. Okay, am I correct? Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 8. There was great boldness within, this, within the church because they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fasting, the breaking of bread, and to fellowship. Wow, it's exciting. When we get together and we see how God is moving, and I'm just telling you, there's a stirring that's happening here. And the blower on the fire is going to, it's just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay, brother, you ready to go to the next one? 
Um, okay, so I want to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. How am I doing on... Oh, boy. Okay. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And so... The little bit of, of the working of the Holy Spirit, of just coming upon people and having a sense of people's hearts just so ready. They're open, that, that desire of wanting to be filled, hunger and thirst for righteousness. I mean, they were filled. We're filled. Amen. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to go the sped up version because I want to take some time and I want to pray. Okay. I thank you. Okay, Luke chapter 10. So in, in the prayer of repentance and intercession, there's the prayer of Jesus that we would come to know the love of the Father. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it so seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son that who the son is except the father and who the father and who the father is except the son and the one to whom the son wills to reveal him then first john chapter 3 1 and 3 1 through 3 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of god Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we know that we are ch children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And then lastly, John chapter 17. Father, I desire that they also you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but you, I have known you, and these have known you that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to play one more song, and while we're doing that, I just, uh, do, you, do you have that song, brother? Um, I Surrender. So I'm just going to ask, because we're, we're more of a subdued crowd than Zimbabwe. <laughs> Honestly, I wish I could take Zimbabwe and, oh man, I talk about dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it is just amazing. But you know what? The Holy Spirit is alive and active. And so, as the scripture says, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So, uh, if, if this has resonated in your heart, where, go ahead and start playing. If, if, if you need to surrender, if you need to come back to a heart of worship, if you need to repent, I would invite you to come up front. And we're going to pray. If you are afraid of opening up that small part in your heart, don't be afraid. This is a safe place. A very safe place. I want to pray for you. If you're not born again, I want to introduce you to the Heavenly Father. Can I do that? I would say run up here. It's amazing. The walk. And then if you need prayer of intercession, you want to pray. Maybe you're dry. There's a real dryness. It's like, oh God, I just want you to know I'm crying. My heart longs for you. Where are you? I, I want you to come. We're going to see what the Holy Spirit will do. And 
this small spark that starts is just going to be a consuming fire. I'm going to walk down here. If you want to be born again, come up first. And if you need to repent, and you, that repentance could be sin. It could be because you've walked away from him. It could be because he's not first in your life. I would encourage you to come up and let's pray. And then if you need to intercede for others, if there's just a real heart cry, let's pray over you. Let's all gather together and let's pray. And let's see what God wants. And there's my grandson. And I'll tell you what, I've got more family here today. What a privilege it is to have family. You guys are my family. Jesus Psalms 34, verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So my question for you is, are you tasting? Are you seeing what the Lord is? Is your refuge Refuge means a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. And I saw this picture of this fortress. And many just standing outside the fortress, not going to the refuge and going, why is this happening to me? The enemy is just attacking. This is so hard. And God's going, come. Come be in my refuge. Taste and see me. 
I was talking to Isaiah the other day, and we were just talking about how we, we've come to a spot where everyone needs prayer. Like, there isn't one person that's, like, so perfect and, like, has everything great. We're like, nope, I, I'm good. I don't, I don't need God's anointing over me. I don't need more of the Holy Spirit. I don't need more. So my, my cry to you is thirst. Want to see more of who the Lord is. Let's continue in this and pray for each other. Yeah. 